Hello and welcome. These are horse racing selections for Saturday the 1st of April. I am Flat Cap Callum and I'm hoping you are all very, very well. All right, we're here. It's the start of the flat season. It's a new month. Uh, it's Lincoln Saturday, which I get very excited about. It's just a shame there's not loads of other races to go with it this year. Um, but that is that is where we're at. So coming up today, we have very, very much focused on the two main races at Doncaster, the Lincoln and the Spring Mile. So I've got two lucky 15s and then a big old combination doubles bet. So it is a £20 stake, standard stake for the channel. Um, that is all we're doing today. There's not a lot else I liked outside of, of the two main Doncaster races. So it's £20 stake. That is what is coming up. Um, and my word, do we need something to boost morale on the channel? March has finished. We got absolutely butchered. <laughs> Statistically speaking, the worst month on the channel. So minus £117. That's the worst amount. And minus 28% profit and loss. That is the worst percentage. Absolutely got butchered in March. And yeah, it... Look, this time last year, I was doing videos every day of the week. Now I'm only doing them five days a week, and I'm, you know, I've had a few few days off here and there and whatever, and I took a took a bit more than that off after Cheltenham. And the challenge with that is, there will be days that uh, that get missed. But uh, yeah, the days that get missed really are felt at this juncture when we are twelve days stake behind for the year. So um, yeah, the figures don't look pretty at all this year. You compare them to the whole of the channel, it's fine. But this last three months have not gone well at all. And we are not escaping from that at all. We would love to uh, to bounce into Lincoln Saturday. That would be excellent. Um, last year, Lincoln Saturday, it was a bit of a different calendar because it was the same weekend as the cover meeting that was on last weekend. And I have a vivid memory of watching it. Sat, I was I was at my parents' house. I remember it was at my parents' house. I was watching the race with my dad, and uh, and it got to the halfway point in the day, just before the Lincoln, and the day had gone so bad. Nothing had got placed, and I'd put out an absolute stack of horses. Nothing had got placed, and then Johan goes and wins the Lincoln, which was my, my value horse of the day. Um, and then, then we went in and we we uh, we had a win in two places at nice prizes at the Curra to finish us off, and it was a, it ended up being a really really good day. Oh, how I would like a repeat! The Lincoln is a very very tricky handicap. Um, it is, I don't know what it's, I don't know why it's one of my favourites. It always has been. I think it's just the start of the flat season. It's exciting. Um, I like the puzzle of the fact that half of them haven't run for a while and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I like, I really do like the Lincoln as handicap. It's not to say I win every year. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you I find the winner every year because clearly if there's a four, five to one unexposed four-year-old favourite, that's not the horse I'm going to be on. So uh, so yeah, I, I always will look for value. I'm not looking to try and always pick exactly the, the, the possibly the best horse. Um, but yeah, I've done all right over the years on the Lincoln. Um, and this year we've got the Spring Mile, which is the sort of the consolidation race, which last year was terrible. I think there was like eight runners, which is like a record low. It was awful. This year we've actually got two full size twenty two horse fields and less than any non runners. So uh, that is what we've got. Um, so let's run down. How did the last day of the month go uh, on Friday? Thirty on sixteen sixty three. Um, Definitely preferable for Sky. If you didn't have Sky, you wouldn't have got most of that back. Um, it, it, it wasn't a good day, generally speaking. Um, so this bet was trash, I think, really. this Nothing really did good on that at all. So that, that was uh, done and dusted. Then, uh, yeah, this, this got blown because it got seven, went down to seven runners in two places. The Deep Spirit came third. Um, backed into nine to one from thirty threes. It was only a very small. It was like five p rule four on it. Um, yeah, backed into nine to one came third, but it didn't matter because there's only seven runners because of two non runners. It didn't matter here because then this horse very suspiciously got backed right into a short price, which cost the others a, a, a rule four on that one, but got withdrawn. But my other two were absolute donkeys. So um, yeah, nothing back there. Then we went to bet three, which was the best bet of the day. So Bay Rat, which was the horse of the day, uh, got backed into 16 to 1 from 66s. 
Sky and Coral paid out the fourth place on that one. Um, Shane was saying he thinks he got paid out three six five. It certainly didn't didn't weren't advertising paying for, and I didn't get paid out, and I I put some money on for a three six five account. Um, so uh, yeah, if you if you've done if you did get paid out three six five or anything else, well done to you. But yeah, as far as I'm aware, Sky and Coral, and then we we had three shorter prices. And they all finished one out of the placings. So that was fifth, which would have been good enough that it was a non-runner. So then it was fourth, uh, four places. It, it was fifth. Uh, that was fourth. We needed top three. And that was fourth. We needed top three. Painful margins. Just one extra place ahead, each of them. And <laughs> we would have actually won for March. Um, that's how the slim margins work. Um and then here, yeah, we had a non-runner in there and a place. So there was a little bit back there. That was it. And then we went into this one and we only managed to get a place there. That was it. That was second. And then the Dundalk special couldn't save us either. We had a winner on there. Got back to in, I think. It was 130 favourite. It was very short in the end. Um, but, yeah. So... Another day of slim margins, another day of backing horses that ended up being a lot shorter on the SP. So we got value on our side. We did not seem to have the slim margin on our side. So what we're doing, what we're doing Saturday, we are trying to uh, snag the winner of the Spring Mile and then put that with the winner of the Lincoln. That's the plan. So what have we got? Um... Starting off here, so lucky 15, number one. 225, Doncaster, clear angel, 50 to one. Um, that's the spring mile. 240, Kempton, bear, fourth, one, 16s. 335, encourageable, 25s. Uh, that's the Lincoln. And 340, Town mass gathering, 33s. So 15p each way, lucky 15. And then I've stuck 350p each way singles. Um, on my preferred horses, in the two Doncaster races and mass gathering is a reasonable enough price. So 750 bet that. Sky are best um, because they are paying seven places on both of these. Um, most bookies are four here and Sky are five. Most of the bookies are five there. Sky paying seven on the two Doncaster races. 365 are paying six on both of them. So they are next best. Paddy are paying... Um, six on uh, so, but you'll get bog on 365 paddy is it I, I can't even remember now i'm not i'm not going to say it and just get it wrong but I, but i know paddy a third best on on the way i've configured the bet um so sky best then 365 then paddy so that's bet one and then bet two so oh, you'll get the idea that friday was the volume day. this is not to the volume day um so we've got 225, second horse in that in that race, May Song, 22s, 240. I didn't have another horse, so on balance, I've gone with Bear Force 1 in both bets. Um, it, it's not, I'm not looking at thinking it's, 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 I say it's, it should, should, it should be about 9 to 1, I think, but, so it, there's about a 7 point value in it as I would read it, but, um, yeah, it's not, it's not huge, it just happens to be I don't have an, an extra horse, so I've put it in both bets because I felt it was the solid one of the, the non Doncaster two. So 240 Kempton, Bear Force one, 335 Doncaster Safe Voyage. It doesn't fit any of the criteria for a Lincoln horse really, um, but uh, but it, it runs creditably um, and, uh, and I think it's a good price. So Safe Voyage is in and then 415 Bellystown. So both of these bets finish with a different race at Bellystown. Loudest Whisper 12 to one. 15 pence each way, lucky 15, nothing extra on that. And then it's Sky, then 365, then Paddy, and then Hills and Betfair. So that's about place terms on the Lincoln, about paying six places on the Lincoln. Um, so, yeah, uh, all of those, that's right, all those bookies are paying six places on the Lincoln. Um, but with Paddy, you'll get a bog in the morning. 365, you'll get it the night before. And Hills and Betfair, you won't get a bog. Um, but they're better than, say, for instance, Coral, who I'd mentioned a lot on here. Um, not not a good uh, bookmaker to use for tomorrow. So that is bet two. And then we get into Spring Mile Lincoln combo bet. Eight pound is your bet. That's our main bet for the day. It's trying to snag ourselves a profit on the main two races. Oh, it would be lovely to hit two winners, but... Even a couple of places in each one will, will, will do us nicely, but uh, we will see. Um, 
so uh, w- I'll run it through and then, I- then I'll talk about the races. Um, so 225, Clear Angel 50s and May Song at 22s that are in the Lucky 15s. Then I've put two shorter ones in there, Broken Spear 17 to 2 and Arthur's Realm 9s. 335, Safe Voyage 22s and Encourageable 25s. Got another big one in there, um, Toshizu 28s. And then two smaller ones, Montasib and Baradar 12s and 11s. So that's 20 times 20p each way doubles. So that's all combinations. There's 20 different doubles that you can have there. And then it's Sky, then 365, then Paddy, then Hills, then Betfair. So um, what do we know about these races? They both run the same course, the same uh, amount of horses um, and uh, same distance. So you can learn a lot from the first before you get to the second. What does history tell you? Because um, we're into flat season now, so so disappearing other other is it horse going to make over the get it over the jump and is it the right kind of jump? Now we're into what what is draw bias? That's our, our variable. So these horses don't tend to fall. That, that happens sometimes. They don't tend to fall, but we do have a variable of draw bias. Doncaster draw bias isn't massively strong. I wouldn't say. But the problem is it varies from year to year. Um, The key thing I would read from the draw is I would absolutely prefer not to be stuck in the middle. So you tend to find horses on the wings. um, And so you'll see in this staking plan, I'm trying to cover, I've covered the bases a little bit here. um, But most of these horses are either in the top seven or bottom seven uh, of the draw. I've tended to not go in the middle. I've got, I think I've got one in each in each bet. Um, in the middle um, and that was kind of best of the the non-drawn well ones so I've got in here I've got s- some high some low and then not much in the middle I would rather not be in the middle um, so yeah I want to be in the top seven or bottom seven uh, stalls is what I think um, it's going to be very soft to heavy going um, history tells you at the Lincoln carrying a big weight is not necessarily preferable you either want something that's unexposed or something that runs well first time out fresh and that's that's kind of what you, where you're looking at so you're either looking at an unexposed horse that's improving recent history pretty good for four-year-olds Johan last year wasn't but the, but the previous four five or six were all four-year-olds so unexposed four-year-olds I haven't got <laughs> to be fair in the in the in the Lincoln I haven't gone much for four-year-olds. Encourageable is my number one pick because it, it does fit all of all of what I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, I've actually got more five-year-olds in, in that bet. So yeah, you're looking for something fresh or something unexposed in there. Doncaster form is helpful but not essential. Um, and yeah, so, so that's generally how I would read that one. The difference with the spring mile is you've got a slightly lower quality race. Um, and you, you're, you've got a few more horses in there that have been running a lot over the all-weather, um, and therefore what they've got is they've got fitness on their side, and that can be a helpful thing, but you also want to look back and go, where have they gone on the jumps? Uh, sorry, jumps, <laughs> absolutely nonsense. Where have they done, where, what have they done on the turf as well? Um, so finding a horse that might have run a bit on the all-weather, but unexposed in the turf can be a helpful thing as well. That is that. So... I'm not the gospel, I'm not the oracle. What I'm saying to you is my view of these races is, yeah, you want a bit of soft ground experience. You want to find a horse that might run well fresh or you want to find a horse that's fit. You either want to find a horse that's unexposed or you think might be lurking in the handicap. And I would want to, I would want to avoid the middle draw um, and I'd want to avoid a particularly high weight. That's how I read it. These are these are guidelines, is what I would say. I, I always say trends are there to be broken. Trends get broken all the time, and we'll be soon into Grand National in a, in a, in a couple of weeks' time. And uh, there'll be trends. Everybody will be talking about the trends of the Grand National. They get broken all the time. Noble Yates broke a whole stack of trends. Um, everyone and their auntie then, like six months later, says, "Oh, yeah, do you remember when I backed Noble Yates?" No, I don't. No, because I remember you talking about trends, um, and it was too young or whatever it might be. So that is that. All right, so that is it. Two two lucky fifteens and uh, and a combination double, and we're, we're outside of three horses. We are all on the main two races, so we are very very largely stacked, much more than you would normally find me do on the channel. I'm happy. It was happy enough to do it like that because, um, yeah, I think the, these these races are 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 worth going at, and 
right at the start of the season, a lot of people might avoid it. Um, I kind of I kind of like the challenge of, of trying to figure out the extra elements of the puzzle. So we will see whether or not we can get April off to a, off to a decent start at least, or or start trying to turn around this blinking twelve days state. I mean, twelve days. Come on, like, ugh. Uh, yeah, I really, really could do, and I'm sure everybody else could do with with a nice win. Um, uh, to 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 just yeah, just give everything a bit of a boost. Really, it's just it's just when you just keep getting a bit back and you know but not enough it's it's yeah we, we are so overdue statistically speaking getting a nice win on the channel but you never owed anything in this game all right that is me um if you want the freebets.com video it'll be out in the morning and then sunday selections um are very much most likely to be um most likely to be yeah they're most likely to be saturday night possibly they might drift over but i'll let you know in the review um whether it's going to be a uh a, sun, a Saturday night or a Sunday morning vid for Sunday selections. All right, that is me. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the Lincoln. Let's hope that we get at least some run for our money in, 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 in that field. Uh, and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.